Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video today about the easiest houseplants to both propagate and to keep alive. I had someone recently ask me um, about easy, easy to keep houseplants because they had difficulty keeping some alive and I said, all right, I got two suggestions. One is the Madagascar dragon tree, which you're looking at right now, and the other is the snake plant. Um, both I actually find are very easy to keep indoors and outdoors um, but again i live in a warm environment uh, zone 10b so outdoors may not be an option for everyone so if we're just talking about indoors i'm going to start with the madagascar dragon tree as you can see i have a large one right outside my home and you can see many parts of it that have been cut already or have fallen off uh, so periodically i go out and i make cuts to my dragon tree. Um, so this one I made a few months back uh, because it started to get these walking roots that I didn't really want. So I ended up cutting this and then a number of other branches around the tree. Um, I also have a bunch of them in my backyard. So I usually have a supply of these dragon trees ready to go. I do try to propagate them in both soil and water, depending on my space. I have more limited indoor space, so I usually end up propagating them in soil, but you can see the cuts are pretty easy because many of the branches are pretty thin, and that's my, my haul for that day <laughs> when I was pruning the tree in the front. But yeah, just cut them off, get a good pair of sharp shears, and get them off the tree. And again, you can put them right into soil, I usually have a supply of cactus soil, which is good for these if you are able to keep them outside. You may want to prop them up because they do get a little bit top heavy. So you might actually see in this video them falling over a little bit. So you might want to prop them up uh, or just bury them deeper, get an even deeper pot and just throw them in there. And the nice thing about these is that they look really nice throughout the rooting process. So I have another, a number of other trees that are easy to propagate, like the tea plant, for example, but they look really ugly when you are trying to get them to root because the leaves brown and they fall off and, you know, the stem ends up being fine, but they look pretty ugly. The Madagascar dragon tree looks great. A few of the leaves will dry out, but overall it looks nice indoors. So if you want to use water to root them, they'll stay looking like this. I mean, Maybe not that one because <laughs> I cut the top and the bottom just to watch that grow. But what you will end up seeing if you cut the top is two pieces coming out. They'll still have a little bit of a stump, but eventually it will get covered. And this is what they look like one month later. So I'm going to show you the one month updates of the trees in the soil and then also the trees in the water. And this one I just left outside. So it got rainwater whenever. Um, this one was kind of a mixed bag, so I think the one I'm going to pull out right now does have some roots on it. You can usually feel if you're tugging and there's resistance that you have some root growth. I probably wouldn't normally pull them out after a month, but just as, this is just for video purposes. Um, so yeah, you can see roots within a month on the ones in the soil. I would probably just leave them for a couple months just to make sure they have better rooting. And then the one in the water here, you can see the one without leaves actually just looks like a, a paw, <laughs> but those were all really thick roots. So that one grew nicely, um, again, without the leaves. And then the one with the leaves did end up taking a little bit longer, but within two more weeks, it also had roots on it. Uh, it does take a little bit longer, obviously, because some of the energy is going toward the leaves. And then we're going to move over to snake plants, which are just as easy. Um, again, you're going to be trimming these off in a similar way to the dragon tree, just chopping it wherever you want. And the cool thing about snake plants, if you've never tried to propagate, is you can just cut them many times. Um, so you'll see that's what I'm doing here. Probably could have used better scissors also. But um, yeah, it's nice to cut them at the top. Obviously, you still have the shape 
but then you can just reshape them. They are very forgiving. So if you don't mind having like a blunt end, you can just cut them in this way or you can cut them into a triangle shape. I typically cut them into triangle shapes. Really, you can do any shape with the tops of these. So this is how I left the snake plants similar to the dragon tree. They can either go straight into soil or they can go into water. Uh, again, if you're doing it indoor, water is probably the best option. So I just put them in. I actually popped them in with a cactus this time, but I've done water rooting so many times with snake plants. So I just get them in there and change out the water every couple of days. And then within a few months, I believe this was three months, you start to see the babies at the bottom and the roots. You can actually leave them in water for a long time. I wait until the roots are a few inches long before replanting them or the babies have gotten big enough to detach. So even though the snake plant and dragon tree like to root in water, they do not like to sit in wet soil. So when you transfer them to soil, make sure you're only watering about once every two weeks. They can even go up to a month, um, but you don't wanna overwater and kill them. And they can tolerate indirect light and direct light. So you can put them really anywhere in your house. Subscribe to learn more with us.